peak. The clouds of Bramble <laughs> part. <laughs> Here's the Dean and Us Hall of Fame. <laughs> oh, you right? Couldn't have done it. Couldn't do it without you, Pete. Tell you. Wouldn't want to either. No. Oh dear, oh dear. Who have we got this week, Ramblers? Who have we got this week? I'll tell you who we got this week. We got the man who's just retired. Christian Vieri. Oh, good choice. Mm. Thanks. Good choice. Thanks. Come, son. Man's a legend. Well, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm beckoning him. He's yeah. not in yet. You're yeah. taunting him. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Christian Vieri recently um, announced his retirement. You're just a life story and a bunch of mundane facts away from being in the dim wind. When that's all the fame. <laughs> Come on. Sorry. Um, apology accepted. <laughs> um, uh, yes, Christian Vieri. Uh, oh my giddy aunt. A prolific and uh, very powerful centre forward. Um, not your maybe stereotypical Italian centre forward, would you say? Um, I, I think it, I'd like to think. I mean, I'm, I'm, I've always been a big fan of Christian Vieri's work. Yes. And at, at his peak, um, which I'm sure you'll come on to at Inter, he was the complete striker. Ooh. He was brilliant. He the was big shout. brilliant. Well, he was uh, he was born in um, Italy. Now, I I wasn't sure. I thought he was born in Australia because I know he's got links to Australia. Mm. But he was born in Italy, in Bologna, to be precise. But his family moved to Australia in. Um, it was sorry. He was born on the July the twelfth, nineteen seventy three. Six years after. The summer of love. Yes, indeed. It's always worth a mention. Um, Pete, come on. What's no, he won? Summer of love. No. The sperm race. Yeah, there you go. Thank yeah. you. Which um, is kind of the love race, if you believe in that. That's <laughs> true. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so he, they moved to Australia when he was uh, four years old in 1977, and they moved back to Italy in 1988. Um, his father, Roberto Vieri, was a pro footballer and played for, amongst others, uh, Sampdoria, Juventus and Roma. Mm-hmm. Fix. Nepotism. <laughs> it, it's, it, it's your, it is an opinion, if nothing <laughs> more. Um, uh, and, uh, and his brother... Um, he was a professional footballer. Currently, he still is. He's currently playing in Serie B. His brother's played for Australia. He has yeah. six caps for Australia. Yeah. I mean, it was a, a couple Just of years ago. Massimiliano or something. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you said that. Because oh, I certainly oh, wasn't going to try. I'm a big fan of the Vieri family in general. Well, they sound like a good bunch. Yeah. Um, isn't Christian Vieri really into his cricket as well? He is. Because right. I, I, I can remember um, when they were talking... Because he speaks really good English. Well, of course. Yeah. And um, he said that... With a slight... With a bit of an Aussie accent, as you'd yeah, expect. Yeah. He said his, he said his sport, all-time sporting hero was Alan Border. The great uh, Australian Isn't cricket right? captain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm not marvelous. a big fan of Italian cricket. Very defensive. No, yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like what you've done there, very James. Slow. Um, he was uh, he started his professional career with um, Torino, and he didn't play many games with him. A handful of games there, and he moved down to Serie B for a few seasons. He's so had more clubs than Nick Faldo, Christian Vieri. Yes, he has indeed. Um, the other sports theme is just raging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody stop me, because I'll tell you what. When I get going, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, you're only three steps behind us. Yeah. Um, he uh, eventually caught the eye of, of Juventus. He played for, so I should say, he played for uh, Pisa, uh, Ravenna, and uh, Venice, and uh, Venetia, Atalanta. That is. Well, Venetia, yeah, but yeah. it's Venice is is how us Brits would say it. Um, and then eventually uh, he caught the eye of Juventus, and they signed him from Atalanta. And really, when he signed for Juventus, this would this was the start of um, quite some journey for the big men. Yeah. Um, the season he signed for Juventus, uh, that's when he uh, earned his uh, first international cap and he played a handful of games for Italy that season. And he was actually bought, really, to replace Fabrizio Ravinelli, mm-hmm. who went to Middlesbrough, of course. So, big shoes to fill. Um, but whilst he was at Juventus, that's when he became a real top player. His scoring record wasn't fantastic for Juventus, it was, it was OK. But but he really, uh, his performances were, were very much... Uh, Catching the attention. He was, col- was a colossus. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Well, I think I think the the, the the potential really started coming out, and people saw actually. Hang on a minute. This this chap can play. This boy's a different class. Yeah, <laughs> effectively. Again, only he was only at Juventus for a year, and Atletico Madrid came in for him, and I think he was bought for. Um, it was about twenty million dollars. Uh, it was sort of fourteen million pounds, I yeah. think. And uh, he was only twenty-three. Um, and at the time, that was uh, he was the world's third most expensive player. He had a brilliant time at Atletico. And he? this was really the beginning of, of, I suppose you would call his golden period. In, in when he was in Madrid, he scored thirty-four goals in thirty-eight games, and he won the uh, 
Pichichi yep. uh, Trophy as La Liga's top scorer with 24 goals and 24 24 league goals and 24 league games. Cracking. Mm. That ain't bad, is it? Even Jesus Gill would be pleased with that. Well, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> as he probably employed them as his own personal servant as well. <laughs> <laughs> Score goals yeah. around him for his enjoyment. <laughs> yeah. Stick up nets everywhere. Was that one goal he scored for every manager they had <laughs> <laughs> in, in that season? <laughs> Um, well, this was all, of course, in the run-up to the 98 World Cup, uh, where he featured heavily for Italy. He scored five goals in five matches, and he played up front with Alessandro Del Piero and Roberto Baggio. Obviously not at the same time, but, um, you know, but... Oh, Del Piero and Vieri, you're having that yeah. with Del- Baggio as well. You know, that is wonderful stuff. They um, they reached the quarterfinals and were put out on penalties, but he was second joint top scorer with uh, Gabriel Battistuta, mm-hmm. who, of course... Uh, He's, He's already, already in. in already in the Hall of Fame yeah. uh, behind, and, and obviously Davos Suka was the top scorer at that World Cup so after the World Cup he was on the move again uh, back to Italy with Lazio um, he had a decent season with Lazio um, and uh, he won the Cup Winners Cup the last ever Cup Winners Cup yeah. awesome at the Demons Hall of Fame he can't move <laughs> <laughs> he's going to feel memories he's very gonna, memories he's going yeah. to feel at home he scored a lovely header in the final yeah. um, if you remember once again um, is it fair to say he was one of the best headers of the ball of all time I think you, you'd be on the safe ground of the ball I think yeah well, that, that would be the proper word <laughs> yeah, yeah. Him and, him and, uh, there, there was that time when him and Oliver Beerhoff were just yeah, ridiculous yeah, yeah. the neck muscles on them two yeah, yeah, yeah. like horses the yeah, pair of them yeah <laughs> unbelievable <laughs>